In the month of November every year, the, the church focuses our attention on the souls in purgatory, and she wants us to do several things. First of all, she wants us to gain suffrages and indulgences for the holy souls, and to exercise charity towards them as much as we can. And secondly, to see ourselves as future souls in purgatory, maybe, and to live our lives in such a way that we will spend as little time there as possible. And, and I wanted to talk about this subject today and about the pains in purgatory that, that the souls there suffer. There are mainly two forms of suffering that exist in purgatory. There's the pain of separation from God and the pain of, of senses, of the fire. I think the, the pain of fire is pretty easy for us to understand. We've all been burned on a hot stove or, or drank tea that was too hot and burned ourselves. But the pain of, of separation from God is something much more difficult to understand. And, and I wanted to talk about that today. It's interesting to think about the fact that as bad as the pain of fire is, far worse than, than any, any pain from being burned by fire in this world, the pain of being separated from God is actually believed to be worse than the pain of being burned by fire. So to help us understand what purg purgatory is like, we should really try to understand the worst pain in purgatory, which is the pain of being deprived of God. First, let's think about being deprived of something in general. Sometimes it's painful for us to be deprived of something if it's something that we really need. Uh, think about a, a sick person who needs a doctor to cure him or, or needs some medicine. Or you can think about a, a starving person who really needs some food to eat. Or, or someone uh, dying of thirst. In all of these cases, the thing that this person wants is something that will deliver him from some terrible evil. And in the same way, the people in purgatory want the vision of God. They, they want to be in heaven, to be delivered from this terrible place of torment. And the fires of purgatory are, in fact, the same fires that exist in hell. Even the greatest pain that someone could suffer in this world is, is very little in comparison with the fires of purgatory in hell. There's a frightening story about a sick person who was lying in bed and he was in, in terrible pain. And his, became, his pain became so great that, that he didn't even want to live anymore. And he prayed to God to take him out of this world because he just couldn't bear it. And God vouchsafed to grant him a vision of his guardian angel who appeared to him. And he encouraged him and he told him that if he could just bear his sufferings patiently in this world, it would shorten his time in purgatory. But the sick person said, no, I just can't do that. I'm in too much pain. I would rather be in purgatory than be here. So God granted his wish and, and he died. And then his angel appeared to him when he got to purgatory and he said, do you think you made the right choice? And this poor soul said, how many years have I been in these terrible flames? And his guardian angel said, your body on earth has only just passed away. In fact, it hasn't even become cold. And that, that poor soul realized what a terrible mistake he had made. The souls in purgatory have a great and consuming desire to see God. <clears throat> They want to see God so badly that nobody in this world has ever wanted anything as badly as they want the beatific vision. They want to see the vision of, of the fountain of eternal life. They want to see God's infinite perfection and, and his peace and his joy. But instead, they're in purgatory and, and they're in pain and suffering. And, and they have absolutely nothing there. They're even deprived of the consolations that we have sometimes in our sufferings in this world. People who are, are sick and suffering in this world, 
can sometimes go to sleep and forget about their pain and their problems. They can usually engage in other occupations or pastimes that will take their mind off of their problems. And in this life, nobody is so wretched that he doesn't have at least some form of enjoyment once in a while that, that helps him bear his sufferings. But in purgatory, there's none of those things. They never sleep, they never have any other recreation or anything to distract them from their terrible condition. All they think about 24 hours a day is this burning desire that they have to be freed from their misery and to be with their creator and to see God. Sometimes things that we want in this life turn out not to be good for us or Sometimes we're not sure that something that we want really will be good for us. And sometimes that can mitigate our desire for, for the things that we want that we don't have. Or it can console us if we don't get what we want. We can figure, well, maybe it's for the best that I didn't get this promotion at work or, or that this person turned against me and doesn't like me anymore or, or some other misfortune. But for the souls in purgatory, they don't have that, that doubt or that mitigation. They know that God is infinite goodness. And, of course, they're absolutely certain that having him will give them perfect happiness. They know that as soon as they're out of purgatory, they'll be in heaven, in their true home, in a place where there will be no more pain, no more fire or suffering of any kind and that they will be perfectly happy with God and, and the angels and the saints. There's another reason why this pain of separation from God is so terrible to the souls in purgatory. And that is this irresistible force that they feel drawing them towards God. And it's the intense desire that they have for God as their creator, as their last end. When we are living on earth, we're... We're burdened by our, our body, we're distracted by our senses, by the appetites of our body, and we don't feel this pull drawing us towards God, this desire for Him. But as soon as our soul is separated from our body, and we're separated from material things, and the cares and the pleasures of this world, all we have left is God. And not only is, is He all we have, but we know how much we really want him because we see that he is, he is the, the, the good. He's the infinite good behind all the good things that we ever wanted in this world. He created everything that we ever wanted in this world. And it was only a tiny reflection. Uh, everything good in this world is only like a participation in the goodness of God. It's like a, a faint shadow in comparison with the infinite good that, that from which it came. And we want God infinitely more than anything that, that we have ever wanted in this life combined. And so not having him is a torment. Just like a hot air balloon that's, that's tied to the ground with a rope, as soon as you cut the rope, it, it shoots up into the air. And our souls are like that. As soon as they are freed from our bodies, they shoot up towards God because that's, that's what they were made for. And being kept from what they, they want so badly is, is a terrible torment. This separation is so terrible that it even, it even afflicted King David in this life when he thought about it and, and he cried out with grief in the Psalms. He said, when, O Lord, will I appear in thy presence? And if we offer prayers and indulgences for the holy souls, and we help them get what they want and what they need so badly, this possession of God, they will be very grateful to us. Imagine how grateful we would be if we were, if we were sick and dying of some, of some terrible disease, and someone came in and gave us a medicine that healed us, and it restored us, to perfect health, we would owe that person our lives. Every day after that, we would think about that person 
and we would do everything that we could to help him and to repay the debt that we owed him. And that is exactly how the souls in purgatory will feel towards us. And it really is very easy for us to help them, just to say a few prayers in church today or, or, or on All Souls Day, to say the six Our Fathers and Hail Marys and Glory Bees. It only takes a few minutes. And yet, the power that it has to help these souls is something that we can't even understand. We can only believe it by faith. And, and the church has done everything she can to help her children in the church suffering. And has given us many incredibly generous indulgences that we should make use of. For one Hail Mary, we can get 300 days of, of penance worth of satisfactory merit. Most of the short ejaculations, the, <clears throat> most of the common ones that only take a second, give us about 300 days indulgence, most of, the, most of them. That means that the equivalent amount of satisfaction for sin, as if we had done penance for that amount of time. That, that's what we get. We get the same, merit, same uh, satisfaction for our sins as if we had done 300 days worth of penance. And we should be grateful now that we're living in an age of the church when it's so easy for us to earn so much satisfaction for sin for ourselves and those in purgatory with these very easy prayers that give us such great indulgences, because this didn't always exist in the church the way it does today. In the, the liturgical year of, of Abbot Geranger on All Souls Day, he has an interesting speculation on why this is the case, why the church is, is so much more generous with indulgences now than in, in the earlier days of the church. And he says that, that it might be because purgatory has a lot more people in it now than it did in the earlier days of fervor because we're a lot more worldly now and, and sinful now than before. Or maybe because the end of the world might be approaching and we're running out of time to help these poor souls. We also have to remember that, that the monasteries and the religious houses that were founded by, by rich people in the past, by kings and noblemen, to pray continuously for the souls in purgatory, these places have been, have been stolen and destroyed by secular governments so that we don't have the same prayer being offered to God for the relief that, that uh, we did in the past. So the church maybe is trying to replace this loss by greater indulgences distributed among all the faithful. Maybe it's all of those reasons combined. But it's something that we should think about and, and take advantage of and, and take very seriously. I don't want this whole sermon to be completely depressing. Uh, purgatory tends to be a little bit of a discouraging subject. So I thought I would close today with a very encouraging story from the life of St. Teresa of Avila. She knew a nun who valued indulgences very highly and during her life always tried to get as many indulgences as she possibly could. But apart from this practice, she led a rather ordinary life and, and the virtue that she practiced as a nun was, was kind of average. She wasn't a bad person by any means, but she wasn't a saint either. After she died... St. Teresa was granted a vision of this nun's soul going to heaven almost immediately after her death. She had almost no time to serve in purgatory at all. And St. Teresa was amazed about this, and she prayed to our Lord to help her understand the reason. And our Lord said to her that it was because of the great care that this nun had always taken to gain as many indulgences as she could during her life. And our Lord said, it was by that means that she had discharged almost the whole of her debt, which was quite considerable, before her death, and had therefore appeared with great purity before the throne of God. So even if this just regular average nun can skip her purgatory by applying the indulgences of the church, then probably we can do the same thing.
And we can do that not only for ourselves, but for the souls in purgatory who need our help. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen.